we're talking about the expectation maximization algorithm and we're trying to get uh, a sort of a, an intuitive explanation for why the EM algorithm makes sense. So we started out with this goal of maximizing this probability, trying to get a maximum likelihood estimate of theta. And so we specialized to the case of an exponential family, and we found that it was enough to look at an exponential family in natural form. So we, we just did the usual calculus thing. We, we set the derivative of the log equal to zero, and we tried to look for a critical point. And, and then so we, we work this through. And we found that any critical point of that function as a function of theta must satisfy this property. And, you know, this, in general, a critical point does not necessarily gar guarantee that you have a maximum. And this likelihood function here, this thing as a function of theta, p theta of x, in general, it could have multiple local maxima. So th this really will happen in general. And uh, so, so this is certainly not going to be guaranteed to give us you know, a global maximum. But maybe, maybe if we try to solve it, at least we'll, we'll, we'll get somewhere useful. So let's, let's, see, let's think about how we might solve this. So the problem, the issue, it's not really clear at this point, but it turns out that for many models, solving this expression, because theta appears on both sides and, and typically, and especially over on this side, it will tend to be a sort of complicated expression and so that you can't solve directly for theta analytically. So the issue is that often can't solve analytically and uh, lytically for theta. And so let's think about, you know, usually when you have a sort of, this is sort of an implicit equation for theta. And one approach to solving implicit equations like that is to use an iterative procedure. So let's think about an iterative procedure for this. And one iterative procedure we could use would be the following. We could set this side, we could we could break apart the thetas here. We could we could make this theta, we could call one of these say um, theta zero. Maybe we call this one theta zero, and we call this one theta one, and then solve for theta one as a function of theta zero. And then we could set this side equal to theta one, and then solve for theta two as a function of theta one. So that would be an iterative procedure. So let me write down what that is. So here's here's a, an approach. So we could, this is an algorithm. Start with some initial theta, theta zero. And then for t equals one, two, three, and so on, we could solve this equation and I'll write it. Actually, it's going to be a little bit different now because we're going to have as a, so e using the parameter theta t. I guess actually this should be t minus one. T minus one since we're starting at, at t equals one. Of the ith sufficient statistic, so this is just the left hand side of the formula, given x equals little x equals expected value using theta t of the i sufficient statistic so solve this for theta t and we we know you know we know theta t minus 1 on on the teeth step and so if we can solve this for theta t then we'll have have it to use in the next step so this is a procedure. This is a, this is an algorithm. This is an iterative procedure, and it might sort of start looking something like EM. You know, we we're, we're iterating over this parameter, and this sort of looks like 
the expectation in EM. Remember, let's go back up here and look at. So we had in EM, we had this conditional expectation given X, but it was different, right? Here it was the log of the joint probability. And below we got the, the expected value of this sufficient statistic. So it's not looking, you know, necessarily like the same algorithm at this point. But it turns out that they are the same, at least for exponential families. And so here's why. So let's think about So this, we arrived at this algorithm from a very, very sort of natural way of thinking about it. And now we're going to see that this is equivalent for exponential families to the general sort of EM algorithm I described above. And here's why. So in EM, in the general setup, we had this function Q theta. Let's see, let me use the same, maybe I'll use the same notation q theta and theta t and it was this thing this this conditional expectation so q theta and let me just call it theta zero for a general other theta rather than theta t and it was the conditional expectation using theta zero of the log of the joint probability under theta of x and z given that x equals little x and we wanted to maximize this with respect to theta. That was the sort of general step in the, the iteration. So this is standard EM. So let's do that. Let's, let's, suppose, let's suppose that now we have a exponential family, the same form. Let me, whoa, sorry, I, that was a jump. I jumped up here to look at the exponential family and it's it's just this this thing and let me maybe I'll put it in this form here theta e to the theta transpose s of x and x minus log c of theta times h of x and z and if we take the log of this, we get s of x and so we get theta transpose s of x and z minus log c theta minus, uh, or rather, plus log h x and theta. And so now let's take the conditional expectation of this given x. So let's take the conditional expectation. So the expected value of this is, right, because that's q theta, theta, zero. That's the thing we're, we're going to try to, to maximize. So the expectation is linear, so this becomes the expected value. Theta, the inner product of theta with the conditional expectation here. And then we have, this is a constant, log c theta. And this is a constant as a function of theta, and theta is what we're going to try to maximize, so let's just put const here for this. It's a, well, it's, um, right, yeah, it's a constant with respect to, because this is, I should have put theta zero. So the expected value using theta zero of this doesn't depend on theta. Okay, and now we want to differentiate this thing. We want to you know, to try to maximize it, that we do the usual thing. So if we differentiate this with respect to theta i, q, what do we get? Well, 
here we have theta, and this was also theta zero here. This doesn't depend on theta, so we just get the ith coordinate of this, which is si, the ith sufficient statistic, the, the conditional expectation of the ith sufficient statistic, given x. And what do we get here? We get minus, remember, the partial derivative with respect to theta i of log of the partition function is just the expected value of, un under theta, of the ith sufficient statistic. And so, when we set these equal, right, move this over, and you get exactly the same condition as before. The conditional expectation of the i sufficient statistic given x equals the expectation of the i sufficient statistic. But it's a little bit different, right, because this was, sorry, theta 0. Got to keep those straight. Uh, it was a little bit different from, from this, but what I should have pointed to is this one here. This is the iteration. And here we have, so the conditional expectation is with theta t minus 1. And down here, so let's write it, theta 0, s i, x and z. And in EM, what we do is maximize this Q here. We maximize this as a function of theta and make that our next theta. We make that like if this was actually theta 0, then that would be theta 1. And if this was theta t in general, that would be theta t plus 1. That's the general step in EM. And that's exactly the same as this. So, so they, they look very similar. And let me say this, so, so they are equivalent under certain conditions, but so let me say they are equivalent under certain conditions. We were assuming here when we did this maximization with respect to Q that this was an unconstrained maximization over theta. But sometimes it turns out that you need to do a constrained maximization over theta. And so sometimes they will not, this will not be equivalent to the, the algorithm I described before in the sort of, the sort of natural way. Um, so, so you have to be a little bit careful. This is m mainly the reason why I did this is to give you a motivation for why you might, you know, why the EM algorithm sort of makes sense. And if you want to use this, this alternative procedure here, if you want to use this, you need to make sure that whatever thetas you get satisfy the constraints that your problem that your problem requires. You know, if the thetas for your natural for your exponential family have certain constraints, then you need to make sure that that these these thetas that you get by solving this equation satisfy the constraints. So sometimes th those constraints, if there are constraints, they can be satisfied automatically by this normalizing constant. And we'll see an example of that with the Gaussian mixture model. But sometimes they, they may not be. They might not be in general. So, so that's just a, just a word of caution that, that you always need to make sure that whatever thetas you get satisfy the constraints. OK, so I hope this was a, I think this was a really neat, neat sort of way to understand the EM algorithm. You know, just, just this very, very super natural way of, you know, just starting from the idea of trying to maximize this probability and you arrive at the same thing, at least for exponential families, you arrive at the same thing as the EM algorithm, at least under certain conditions. So I've inserted enough caveats in there, but uh, I think this is a really cool way to understand EM and I hope it's helpful to you too.